Welcome back to the Power Report. Vancouver property is the most expensive in Canada, and Chinese money in the last 25 years has influenced real estate development and prices there. Metropolitan Vancouver. At nearly one in every five people, ethnic Chinese make up a greater part of the population than any other big city in North America. A great place to spend money. It's not a great place to make a tremendous amount of money, except in real estate. We bring together the first thing. Henry Yu grew up here. He studies and documents Vancouver history. He says Asians have dominated the property market here for the last half century. In the 80s and 90s especially, uh, you saw you know, more and more Hong Kong Chinese as real estate brokers, as developers, um, the rise of some very big development companies. Condos downtown and lifestyle and experience, I think, really took off with the Concord Pacific development, right? And that was Lee Kai-shing's vision. It sprang up after Vancouver's Expo 86, the Transport and Communications Fair. Lee, Hong Kong's richest man, bought 85 hectares of fairgrounds land for $145 million. The province of British Columbia agreed to clean it up. The North Shore of False Creek had for years before the expo been industrial land. It's been turned into residential land. I'm starting research that's looking at sort of the effect of, of immigration and different demographic groups and wealth on the, the path of housing prices. For sure, immigrants are causing rising house prices, but how much? I think that's really, really hard to tell because we don't have the data to really identify who's buying what, how much wealth do they have, all the kinds of things you'd need to know. So the current idea that mainland money is now buying up Vancouver property is anecdotal. You see support for the anecdotes in the sense that the neighborhoods that demographically uh, are, are seem to be getting sort of a bigger piece of, of mainland Im immigration um, are the more expensive neighborhoods. For instance, the west side of Vancouver, to buy a house... It's not possible for less than $1.5 million. Due partly to the University of British Columbia being there. Last year, the number of foreign students from mainland China grew by 25 percent and passed 2,500. They now command 27 percent of the foreign student population, almost double the number of Americans. We stood in one spot and saw the three phases of property redevelopment in Dunbar, one of Vancouver's most desirable west side neighborhoods. This 40-year-old 2,500-square-foot house sold for more than the asking price of $1.798 million in less than a week in January. On the front door are business cards left by a painter and a contractor. Because there's every chance this house will be knocked down and rebuilt. Like the one right across the lane. On the other side, a newly rebuilt house in the right neighborhood close to UBC, even closer to the nature trails on the university endowment lands, and a bike ride to beaches that surround the university. It's, it's Lin Xu, originally from Taiwan, owns the company that sold this house. Taiwanese were a significant minority of migrating Chinese to Vancouver in the mid-1980s when Lin began selling property. At that time, it's like whole Vancouver, there's only about three or four Mandarin-speaking agents. So I felt that that's a great opportunity, and my in sort of instinct turned out to be right. Mandarin-speaking agents are all over the residential market now, so Lin leads a commercial property team because after they buy homes, some Chinese buyers look for commercial property. I see the same trend from like for Hong Kong and actually it applies to Taiwan and now applies to men in Chinese. In Richmond, there's a prime site being developed by mainland money right on the SkyTrain route running down Richmond's main commercial corridor, number three road. Actually a huge site, we helped them to assemble basically closer to two blocks of land. And uh, if the zoning pass, then you can build um, over one million square feet, uh, mixed use, uh, residential and commercial. This entire area flanking number three road is called Capstan Village. 
Across Three Road from that project, Pinnacle Living wants to build 1,700 units. Concord Pacific is here as well. Its Concord Gardens will cover more than three hectares. What's happening here is big enough that a new SkyTrain station will be built. Much of this has been pre-sold with advertising that would look familiar to anyone from Hong Kong. Richmond has a population of 205,000 people. Hong Kong people started moving there in the 1980s in the run-up to the handover. Because of the uh, mad rush to get out of Hong Kong before 1997, uh, quite a few buyers were, were buying, you know, based on a photo or on a recommendation of friends. And Richmond went from a place with a relatively low population density to having lots and lots of people, the majority of which were ethnic Chinese. And so now it's you know, nearly 65% ethnic Chinese. There's a lot of new mainland migration as well because of this incredible concentration of services, of, of really good Chinese restaurants, of, of various you know, regional uh, cuisines. Density is increasing, but there's a limit. There are restrictions in Richmond on how high you can build because of the earthquake threat. Richmond is Delta land. If an earthquake hits, and it will hit, it's just a matter of when, buildings will basically topple. You'll see Chinese language signs all over the commercial areas. This has prompted complaints to Richmond Council and a proposal that signs be two-thirds English or French, Canada's two official languages. When the Richmond City Council considered this proposal, that unanimously said no way, uh, and partly it's because they know who, who the voters are and you know, which side the majority is on. Richmond Council has, since 2005, also rejected four applications to expand from the Lingyan Mountain Temple, an offshoot of a Taiwan Buddhist monastery. Right now it's this big, and it would become this big. The temple is on number five road, along a stretch known as the Highway to Heaven. The city of Richmond permitted religious institutions to build on agricultural land here, with a key stipulation that has never been relaxed. They must stick within the first 110 meters. And if the Lingyan Temple would just go back to the drawing board and work within the boundaries, they could be building tomorrow. Carol Day is a former Richmond School trustee who lives nearby and opposes the plan. The temple is proposing a land swap to build on the so-called backlands area beyond 110 meters. They want an exception, and not a minor exception. They want to go from 110 meters to 250 meters deep. The religious institutions are supposed to farm the backlands. Day says she's checked, and most of them don't. The Lingyan Temple, in their defense, does farm the backlands to some degree. They've planted uh, fruit trees. Many of the smaller houses in Richmond neighborhoods have been replaced by bigger ones owned by mainland Chinese. In sort of normal developments of neighborhoods, things would happen a little more slowly. But in, in this re it neighborhood, and, and a lot of neighborhoods in Richmond, it's such a quick change. Frank and Kathy have been in their house since the 1980s. Two, three years it's been. The, the, the neighborhood's been hot, shall we say, where but it's a lot been of places really have been intense coming in. So for the last year you know. and a half, I would say. It, it, it makes it look more natural. There's a new duplex going up right across the street. One of the people working on it is a longtime friend of Kathy and Frank's son, Chris. Scott came to Canada from the mainland as a young boy. His family rebuilds houses in the area. Mostly it's just people from China right now. They buy the land. They, they, they tear it down, we design, build one for them, new one. I do the layout of the rooms, mostly. Richmond, the law, you're allowed to build something with over 16 foot of a height on the ceiling. Normally Vancouver wouldn't allow, and that's what they really like. It's not like the houses that are here, the design, that you're losing any great character. They were mid-tier, you know, suburb homes, you know, four or five bedrooms. The houses that are coming in here, I mean, they're, they're nice houses. They arguably, you know, improve the value of the neighborhood. Frank bought his home for about $150,000. He figures it's worth a million dollars. 
it's double edged, right? It, it, it's good that it, it's gone up for, for us. But for his two sons? Would they have really an opportunity in Richmond to buy a house? Probably not. The median household income in the Vancouver area is only about $69,000 a year. Does this latest wave of Chinese going to Vancouver intend to stay? If the kids settle in Canada, then I think they will have every intention to stay here as their primary residence. But if their kids don't settle here, the parents will leave because then that's not their route. Everything's a, you know, wonderful in terms of you know, coming here to spend money, but it's not a very good place for the young. And I think that's our danger, is that the prime use of the city for the young will be education, and then you can't afford to be here anymore. And, and it's a great place to come when you're older and you've made a lot of money, um, but your own kids are going to struggle. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be re-aired on Tuesday and Saturday, as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team, good night, good luck, and good health.